We look along from the cobbled road here of the monastery into the start house. The last man to go of the 194 riders in the Vuelta de España is Nairo Quintana, winner this year of the Giro d'Italia and trying for the double now. He got the lead the day before yesterday when we rolled to a halt for a rest day yesterday. Now, he's not a bad time trial, is Graham, and, and he could well defend his narrow advantage here. Yeah, he's certainly improved in that. I mean, he's still a fairly young rider, but he has improved a lot in this discipline. And uh, even if he does concede some time to maybe Froome, Contador, Valverde, there, I don't think it's going to be too much. He's a few minutes behind Chris Froome. Froome going out, fifth rider from the end, and the riders separated by two minutes on the highway. Now, although the roads uh, seem to be nicely newly surfaced, they are, in fact, very bumpy. Yes, I mean, it's pretty much uh, they've laid tarmac over what was an old road before, but it's not really smooth. I mean, it's smoothed the surface out, but underneath it is still very bumpy. I, th I think we can see what you're talking about there, Graham. It's, uh, it's slab uh, concrete there, poured out of a mould, I think, and it must be very off-putting for the rhythm. Now, back with Alberto Contador here, settling into his rhythm. This will be a big test on his uh, core fitness, the time trial. There's no hiding behind anybody. He'll just want a good, solid performance here. Uh, if he gets the red jersey, he might put a lot of pressure on his team. But the thing is, you've got to ride as fast as you can, Graham. And if you don't want the red jersey, you might still get it. Well, you can never predict what's going to happen in the, uh, in the rest of the Vuelta. So you have, to, uh, you have to take every second that you can. So Alberto Contador, until they get to that first check, we won't really know uh, who is up and who is down. Contador now starting the climb up towards that first checkpoint. So Rigoberto Uran here coming up at the first checkpoint and as he goes over the top, he's just five seconds behind Sanchez, who still sits number one at that checkpoint. Now, what about Chris Froome? out of the Tour de France with injury after only five days. He's already crashed in this race, but he's very much a challenger. We'll get some idea what he's doing when he gets up the top of that hill, but he's aiming at the time of Sanchez, which is 19 minutes and 40 seconds. Contador as well, as we go back to Rodriguez, he's coming up. This will be a worthwhile check. He's going to be in the top four, is he? Yes, only 17 seconds off. Now, that's a good sign with the rest of the race still to go, and he's changing bikes. It's funny, actually. I was just wondering who's going to uh, to do this. He's obviously used his normal road bike for the uh, climbing part, and it's paid dividends and a very quick change onto a time trial bike. We saw this in the tour, didn't we, two years yeah. ago? Well, he's opted for it. That was a planned bike change for sure. Now it's 20 seconds. Froome is ahead of Quintana here. As we look at Nero Quintana, he's the sweeper today in the red jersey. First day in red for him. I always thought it would be difficult for Quintana to keep this uh, jersey today, particularly to uh, Froome and Contador. And we know that Contador, at the last check, was only a couple of seconds behind uh, behind Froome. So we know that Quintana's losing time on both of these riders at the moment. And let's uh, not forget that Froome is 28 seconds behind Quintana in the overall classification. So just eight more seconds. And depending, of course, on what Contador or Valverde do, uh, then he could be in red tonight. No change uh, in the finish house, by the way. The two top riders who have dominated the world of time trialing the past six or seven years uh, are head-to-head -head in the results. Tony Martin, best time. Cancellara, second best time. And a good ride by uh, Cadell Evans, who holds still the third place there. Um, well, he's gone through here only in fifth place, at 18 seconds behind Samuel Sanchez. Sanchez just hasn't come up on our computer and he must be through the next checkpoint now So we don't know if he's maintaining what is an incredible start Okay, it won't worry Chris Froome too much because he's too far behind in the overall But nonetheless Froome there won't be too happy with that Well Contador and at 33 seconds is Quintana Well, we're looking at the next red jersey here at the moment We have to compare it with Froome when he comes through Contador and Froome are 25 seconds apart Overnight. Typical bouncing style of Contador is on his favourite terrain here, but uh, he will still be uh, very capable when he gets on the flatter roads. He is uh, the favourite of the Spanish, there's no doubt about this. Everybody loves Alberto Contador. 
Let's go back up and join Chris Froome, and he's taking that wide, but he's got round. My goodness me, he does take chances, this rider. Now they say, uh, those who have finished Martin and Cancellara, if you want to win this race, you're going to have to take risks. Well, Froome was pushing himself to the limit there. Let's have a look at uh, Valverde as he comes up now. This could be an interesting time. Valverde, best time, 19.37. Now that's more like it for the Spanish time trial champion. That's a great ride by Valverde, and you could see even just from those pictures that he was going faster by probably a couple of kilometres an hour than anybody else we've seen go through that check. Back with Chris Froome now. He might be aware of what's happening behind, he might not be. Well, we know he's capable of pulling back time on the, the more purer climbers in the, in the time trials, but uh, on someone like Contador, it's going to be very difficult. And you have to wonder just... Uh, whether Contador can actually hold Tony Martin. We're all thinking possibly Tony Martin's going to win the stage here, but I'm not so sure whether that's going to happen now. Well, here he comes now, and he's on the fourth fastest time at the moment, Quintana. Contador then will get the win as far as the first check goes. Can he get it at the finish? Because Quintana goes through 21 seconds behind Contador. As we refind uh, the man who is the best time at that first check. Oh, Oh, Quintana. Well, look at this. He's just started his descent here. This is Nero Quintana on a right-hand bend of what we know is very technical, and he's hit the barriers. Oh, this doesn't look good at all. He looks in a lot of pain here. He's not moving. Let's see if we can see that again here. He's adjusting his strap. Well, not his strap, his cleats there. Lines up for the bend. Then he finds it goes round far too acute and he can't get the bike round. He locks up the back wheel and he takes a nasty bang on the crash barrier and his saddle has been ripped off the bike. Yeah, he almost looked like he was just about to save that, but he'd just run out of road by uh, a couple of inches there and he just couldn't, uh, just couldn't hold it up. When he came through that checkpoint, he was 20 seconds off the lead of Contador. But the big question now is just how much time, if indeed he continues, is Quintana about to lose? Well, we're rejoining here the red jersey. He's got back on his bike. He's on his way down. His team car, by the way, has told Quintana to take it easy on that descent. Uh, he will concede time. Chris Froome now, who was slightly behind Quintana, certainly has moved ahead of him uh, at this point. They're heading out now into a lot of wild countryside before we get to the second check on the course. No change on the overall. The top time trialists command the top two positions at the finish. Tony Martin and Fabian Cancellara split by 11 seconds. 15 kilometres to go for Chris Froome. As we go down to the finishing line at the moment. And that looks like it was Sanchez going through in the BMC colours. And just trying to see what his time. I think he's slotted into the third fastest time there, Graham. Yes, he has. 47 minutes 50. So, again, having held the top spot at the first check until Valverde and Contador went through. He was third at the second check behind Juran and Martin. He's continued to lose just a little bit of time. It's still a good ride by Sanchez, but he's too far behind at the moment to affect the overall standings. Contador's very capable of riding very well in time trials on the flat roads. Well, he surprised us for the previous nine days, and today could be the biggest surprise of all when he gets best of all of the overall leaders, because just now Contador is heading into the red race leader's jersey. We won't know exactly how much time Quintana has lost until we get to the next check, but I would suggest he's conceded over a minute uh, sitting on the road there. Had to have a bicycle change. His saddle was ripped off on that crash. He's got a hole in the back of his jersey. Indicates perhaps his race radio has gone straight through and away. He's looking a little bit better on the road there, though. Now, this is the second check we're looking at. Rigoberto Uran, the winner of the time trial stage in the Tour of Italy, his best time here ahead of Tony Martin. Sanchez third, Cancellara fourth, Evans fifth. All, ex all of those riders have now finished uh, the time trial. And the order at the finish is Martin, Cancellara, Evans, and Sanchez is in there as well. But this is the battle for the next red jersey here. Now, at the start of the day, six riders were covered by just 30 seconds. So a head-to-head -head time trial it is at the tail end today. 
and uh, he who gets the best time I think will have the next red jersey between this bunch and Contador is beginning to look a favorite now especially because of the ill fortune of Nero Quintana just totally misjudged the right hand bend I don't know whether you call it youthful enthusiasm because he knew the bend was there yeah, I mean, he was, he was messing around with something on his foot, tightening something up, I'm not quite sure what, but he seemed to be on the right right side of the road, switched to the left, but really it just, it just got that, the line around that bend completely wrong and uh, came down pretty heavily, but uh, he looks as though he's recovered. He does, he looks as though he's settled back in here. New bike, of course, uh, but he looks as though he's not been too badly injured for a while. He wasn't moving and uh, we feared the worst there. Contador is still pulling away from Chris Froome. Chris Froome does not look at all comfortable. But in fairness, Chris, too, Chris Froome rarely looks comfortable. No, N no. but uh, you, look, you look at him and uh, it doesn't look like the normal Chris Froome we're used to seeing. And again, he's uh, sort of not looking comfortable on some of these uh, tricky bends on this, uh, on this course. Contador here, he's triumphed in time trials when it matters, especially in races like the Tour de France. He is a very good man at the moment but there's a huge question mark over his uh, current condition because of his accident in the Tour de France but look at this now two minutes 25 seconds ahead of Quintana that is an enormous gap to give Contador with the mountains around the corner yeah I mean looking at that after having checked the first time check that's uh, almost two minutes that that crash has cost Con Quintana so far and the biggest surprise uh, is to himself because he really never thought he would be challenging in this year's Tour of Spain. He accept, expected to be competitive, his words, in the third week of the race. Well, here we are, entering the second week now, and it looks like a very solid red jersey when we get to the finish. This is Alejandro Valverde, who really, we thought, was the next most likely man to succeed in the case of a faltering by Quintana. He was only eight seconds behind Quintana at the start of the day but he is conceding time. He's eight seconds, ironically, perhaps, behind Contador at the first check. Yeah, may well uh, increase that gap before the finish, I think. As we know Valverde can do good time trials, but uh, not to the same standard that uh, Alberto Contador can. Well, he's got the main course dinner plate on at the front end of his bike there. It looks to be about a 60-tooth chain ring. He's churning down this hill. He's on the highest gear he can muster, and he's, he's got a very high cadence probably 80 and 90 as he goes down. This is Chris Froome, looks a little bit happier at the moment. Forty-seven seconds. Uh, oh, Froome is now just about pegging the advantage yeah. of Contador. It slowed it down a, a little bit, the losses, but uh, it is still going up slightly. But he, if he can pull a little bit of time back, then uh, you know, it could it could save his uh, save his welter, but if he loses any more than that, it's going to be very difficult to bring that sort of time back on Contador. Well, the leaders uh, of this bunch of riders must be very close now to the second check because uh, Rigoberto Uran has gone through. He's got the best time in 36 minutes and 21 seconds, the same time as Tony Martin, by the way. As we see Mikel Nieve of Team Sky, the number two on the squad, coming up towards the finish. And uh, steady performance, should we say, for him. He wasn't expected to uh, be the leader of the team. That's in the capable hands of Chris Froome. Martin's time of 47.02 uh, easily survives the passage of Mikel Nieve as he swings into the home straight. Tony Martin, like Cancellara, training for the World Championships. Neve, 37th best time. He should stay inside the top 45 on the day. There's the effort. Sky's number two there, but he'll be a very valued man alongside Chris Froome. Now the mountains are coming our way. And look at this, Rigoberto Ram was right behind Chavez here. Started two minutes back of him. As he races up, he's, uh, he's lost the time of Martin. He was quicker on the same time. Uh, by tenths of a second at the last check, but he's continued to fall away, as they all have, as Tony Martin has no doubt noted. And this time he comes up now, he's fallen away to third best time, but only 15 seconds behind the world time trial champion. Well, that's a great ride by him. I mean, he's confirmed. He said that, uh, OK, I won the time trial at the Giro, but at that, uh, the Giro, the real big time trialists weren't there, Tony Martin and Cancellara. 
but he hasn't finished too far behind them here, so that's a fantastic ride by him. It is, because he is a man, as this race goes on, could challenge for the red jersey. That's a great ride. I'd be very, very pleased with that. He won the time trial in the Giro d'Italia. It was the 12th day of racing, and it was a tough time trial. Uh, this is the 10th day of racing here, and he's delivered again. So he sits in third place at the finishing line. Now look at this. Uh, Froome has now fallen back to almost one minute here to Alberto Contador as we move forward to Chris Froome. Eight kilometres to go for him. Well, he was looking like he'd pegged it back a little bit uh, just a few kilometres ago, but uh, Contador seems to have uh, put the foot down again on the accelerator. Well, this is Warren Bargui. We haven't seen any of him on the course, and he was the rider who crashed a couple of days ago, approaching the finishing line. Won two stages of this race when he announced his arrival at Big Time Cycling. 49th place for Warren. And yeah, it's not his strongest discipline, but no. he, he knows that. But uh, I think that's a, re a respectable time for, for Bargui. Back out with Quintana. Well, let's hope he's not affected by that crash mentally as well as physically because he has to get back in his rhythm here. He doesn't want to throw away any possibility of winning this race. There's still plenty of roads ahead in which he can triumph. He's uh, one of the best climbers in the world. And the crash, in case you weren't watching, came just after the first check on a right-hand bend. He skimmed down the crash barrier. That's a situation uh, before we come to the finish. Uran still best time, equal there with Martin Sanchez and Cancellara. Uh, they've all finished now, and Iran has slotted in in third place. Valverde has been fifth place there, so uh, he stayed there or thereabouts, but uh, he's losing time to Contador. Martin, Cancellara, Uran, Sanchez, Evans is the order in the finish house. 49 seconds covering them all. Contador is threatening to spring the big surprise. Valverde's in there. We'll wait to see if he's held on to Contador. He went through the check eight seconds behind Contador. Second best time. A time trial champion of Spain for the first time, by the way. Uh, Valverde winning that title in June. And, of course, racing on home soil here. And he's going to feel pretty proud about that. Six to go for Chris Froome. He really has got to lift the tempo all the way to the finish now. Well, he's giving it everything at the moment, but uh, this could well be a disappointing day for, for Chris Froome. Probably didn't expect this. Well, 54 seconds is what the uh, virtual computer is saying here. Losing to Alberto Contador. And that wasn't in the game plan at all. This will be Robert Hessing coming through now. The man that had a very serious heart operation and told to stop cycling for a while has got the all-clear to race again. Here he is, and right up amongst it as well. This is an incredible performance by Robert Hessink. The Belkin man is on the leading team in this race as well. He is the team leader, and he uh, doesn't look like a man who's had a heart operation as he comes off that bottom bend. 13th place for him at the moment, and holding it to the line. Well done. 49.03 concedes two minutes to Tony Martin, who will not worry him. Tony Martin's conceded many more minutes to Hessink so far. And that's a good, uh, a good ride by Hessink as well. He'd be very pleased with that. I think he's here now, maybe possibly looking at a stage win at some time in the mountains. But I think most of all, I think he would like a, a top 10 overall. Well, I think he'll hold it with that ride. He's eight at the start today. We'll check on it later. This is not the finish. This is the approach check here. Contador's gone through. Uh, only third now, but the uh, best of the men that matter at the moment. 36-29 for Alberto Contador. So he's still leading the charge for the next wearer of the red jersey in the Vuelta Espana. Well, here's the arrival of Joachim Rodriguez, uh, eighth on the day, but much higher amongst the leaders. I think this has been a good time trial, Graham, by Rodriguez. Yes, definitely. I mean, this is one of his weaknesses, and he's lost a lot of time before in, uh, in the big tours, but he's right up there, and he'll be very pleased with this time. Best time still, Tony Martin's 47 minutes and two seconds, but Martin way off the leadership of this race for the world time trial champion. Matter of principle, I think, to win today. But Rodriguez comes in 48-51. Well, 
Well, this is a man going long term. He's podiumed in all of the Grand Tours, France, Italy and Spain, but he's yet to win. And uh, he's coming back to good form. There's still plenty of time ahead on the mountains. Let's go back out to the man who's causing the biggest surprise of the day, Alberto Contador. Fastest time at the first check, slips behind Jura and Martin at the second check by only eight seconds. He could well be delivering the big shock tonight. He wants the motorbike out of his way because rules are very, very strict in time trialing. Uh, if, he, if they're pacing him or deemed to be pacing him, he'll be penalised. And this is the uh, hapless uh, Nero Quintana here. This would have been one of his biggest days wearing the race leader's jersey for the first day. Last man to go in the 194 riders and now crashing on the descent of the first climb. Pretty heavily to say the least. Now, Chris Froome coming up towards the finish here. This is the time the others will shoot at because Froome is the first to finish of all of the men who really matter at the moment in the classification. Only eighth place, that really is insignificant. He's not aiming at the top time trialists. He's aiming at beating those behind him as Froome now grits his teeth and lines up for the finish. Uh, Martin's time, 47.02. Froome hits the line with a 48.34. And now we'll have to see what that means. Yeah, not, uh, not what Chris Froome was expecting, I don't think. I mean, he's had his uh, fall earlier on in the welter, but uh, to me, I think he would have expected to be a little bit closer than that. That's uh, not the Chris Froome we're normally used to seeing in a time trial. Well, let's have a look then at uh, Nairo Quintana, because there he is. The back of his red jersey is ripped. His first uh, day in red. It's not going to be in red for him tomorrow. Uh, he fell very, very heavily coming off that first checkpoint. A right-hand sweeper. He'd just been playing around with his right shoe. And then he corrected the bend and he couldn't get his bike around. He scraped the barriers and then he came off the road. Back wheel locked up, saddle flying to the wind. And Quintana didn't appear as though he was going to get up very, very quickly either. Well, I reckon he must have lost about two minutes at that crash scene. And now, as he heads towards the finish, I'm afraid his time is going to be way down the classman of the day. Now, this is winner Anna Connor, the man that won that race two days ago. And I don't think he can be too disappointed with this. This is a man not known to, in amongst the elite of the world cyclist. Uh, but he's certainly getting there right now after a stage win two days ago. This is a very respectable time trial. It's going to keep him up amongst the front runners as we go towards the mountains. Lines up for the finish. Remember, the riders basically who are beating him are nowhere near him in the overall. 13th place for him, a minute 45 off Martin's time. We're looking now, coming through the streets of the finishing town of Borja, and this is Alejandro Valverde, who seemed to be the next man to pull on red, but on the computer, he's a little bit behind uh, Contador. But we'll wait and see because it's up to Valverde now to deliver the best time. He's been amongst the leaderboard the whole way. Second at the first check behind Contador. Slipped to sixth at the second check. Now, has he recovered a little bit? None of them have so far. But looking at the, tire, the position, he might well have picked up a little bit here. As Valverde now sprints towards the line. The time of Chris Froome was 48.34. So Valverde is well inside that. He won't go out to 48.34. So he's taken a few seconds away from Chris Froome as we go through 48 minutes up to the line. 48.3. So he's picked up uh, 31 seconds on Froome. Again, a very good ride by Valverde. He's always Mr. Consistent in all disciplines of the, the sport in the Grand Tour. So uh, he'll, be, he'll be very happy with that. Probably going into second overall. We're looking at Contador now, coming up, he's sitting on third, but remember that's behind the two world's greatest time trialists. Slips a little bit to fourth, he's gone behind Rigoberti Uran, but this is the best of the, of the riders in the top of the classification at the moment. With uh, just uh, Quintana to come behind him, Alberto Contador will be in red tonight. This is a great return to the highest possible rung of the ladder for Alberto Contador. He's taken his revenge on the Tour de France, 47-41 is time, fourth best on the day. Well, we know uh, from the first week of the Vuelta that uh, it looks like Contador is back. We've seen him in the, all parts of the, the Vuelta so far and a couple of the mountaintop finishes, but he's there in the time trial as well. 
An unusual shot of the man who was hoping to defend his first day in red until he crashed coming down the only climb of the day. And it was a heavy fall. Quintana now has had to get himself mentally back in the zone and get on with the job. He's going to lose quite a lot of time here, but we're back. Mountain top finish again tomorrow. Yeah. So let's just see how well he recovers. He's going to be sore in it's the morning. It's a tough tour sure. now, Graham. And we know this guy, providing he's not physically injured, this guy has the ability to fight his way back in to the Welter Spaniel. There's no doubt about that. Lining up for the finish now, Quintana. 50 minutes has ticked by. Not where he wants to be at the moment as he sprints up towards the line. It's only been one day in the red jersey for him. It doesn't mean, though, he has lost today the Welter Espana by no manner of means. This man can climb with the best in the world. Winner of the Giro d'Italia. It's not over for him, and I'm sure that's what management will tell him tonight. He's just got to be composed. There's still a long way to go in this year's welter, and all of the hard roads and the high mountains lie ahead. And he's got to re get himself back into that frame of thinking. And there's another time trial on the last day of this race as well. But for the moment, 82nd place. He concedes four minutes, but that is to Tony Martin, the day's winner. Yeah, I'd be glad that that stage is over, won't he? Um, been a tough day for him, but he's got through it, and um, he'll dust himself down tonight and uh, start again in the morning. More on Quintana in a moment, but first the result. Tony Martin first, as we knew, but his teammate Rigoberto Oran upgraded to second, or rather Fabian Cancellara demoted to third. He was penalised seven seconds for drafting behind a motorbike, presumably nobody saw. Contador was first among favourites. The BMC pair of Sanchez and Evans rode well, as did Alejandro Valverde, a minute behind the winner, 21 seconds behind Contador. Chris Froome lost 53 seconds to Contador in the end. Joaquin Rodriguez was another 17 seconds behind him. And everybody was behind the world time trial champion. The parkour was not easy. Um, the first half with a, with a long, steep climb uh, was super hard. Uh, I had some problems with the heat at the end. So it was not that easy that it... Uh, maybe looked like um, yeah it's a really good good day for me and for the team and um, yeah also with a nice performance uh, from a run he's back now in GC so it's really nice for us yes thimble falls of champagne all round in the Omega team hotel tonight and Tony Martin looking good for the defense of his world title in a few weeks time the enduring image of the day though was the red jersey flying over his handlebars as he lost control on a bend coming downhill Bueno, iba, iba bien en la crono, eh, tenía buenas sensaciones y en la bajada lamentablemente eh, la bici no me frenó, eh, no creía que, que, fue, que fuese tan larga de frenos y, y, y no, me, no me frenó la bici, por fortuna supe, supe sortear bien eh, y no tuve demasiados daños. Unhurt, that's the good news, but he's lost the red jersey to Alberto Contador, who was delighted with how the day went. If surprised that he wasn't run closer by Chris Froome. Bueno, eh, sí que es verdad que sí que es verdad que, que Froome esperaba no que que estuviera delante de mí o si no o si no a la par, porque sí que es verdad que yo confiaba en estar en algo algo más o menos parecido a él. Y bueno, una pena quizá la caída de de Quintana era. La verdad que había que estar súper concentrado en cada momento, visualizar cada curva y aún así se te echaban encima las curvas porque te quedabas, te quedabas corto de largo de, de frenada. Eh, pero bueno, he podido controlarlo bastante bien y, y bueno, la verdad que en ese sentido contento y bueno, aunque ha habido diferencias, está todo muy abierto. Tough day for me today. Um, to be honest, I, I started off way too fast. Um, I think out the blocks the first 10, 15 minutes until the bottom of the climb. Um, I got a bit carried away, chased it a little bit and uh, paid the price for it all the way up that climb and just never never came back from the red there. You've lost uh, <coughs> some significant time to Contador, who seems to be in excellent form, and to some of your other rivals. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've lost a lot of time today. Um, I'm still, still fifth on GC at the moment, just over a minute down. 
Um, I think going back to, I mean, the goal I had coming into this race, I'm going to keep fighting every day, uh, push through to the end and, uh, and give it my all. So here's how the time trial has rearranged things at the top. Alberto Contador now leads by 27 seconds from Alejandro Valverde. And behind a pair of Spaniards, a pair of Colombians, neither of them Nairo Quintana. Rigoberto Oran is up to third. Winner Anacona holds on to his fourth spot. And Chris Froome is still fifth, but now a minute and 18 seconds down. Robert Hesink dropped out of the top eight with his ride today, but no one has dropped as far as Nairo Quintana from first to 11th at 3 minutes 25.